Well, hey guys, we're back. And we're gonna go after some more of them bluegills. We caught a few nice ones in here last time. A few pretty decent ones, good eating. Man, that was delicious. I'm gonna tell you right now, that was, that was some good eating. But we still got a few buffalo gnats, so I may be throwing the old buffalo gnat screen on here in a little bit. But we're gonna go after these bluegills and I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of my tackle setup and uh, rod and reel setups and stuff. And we're gonna see if we can catch some good ones. Let's go see what we can do. Guys, I'm gonna show you how to do my lure setup. I got uh, several different size jig head hooks and this is a number four size hook. And that's a 1 8 ounce jig head hook. I painted red and then just took a black marker and dotted his eyes. And I got me a, a large rubber slip bobber uh, stopper on it. And I got a Thiel 1 8 ounce cork. I love these Thiel corks. They're very sensitive. These are crappie corks, but they're real good for brim fishing too. And I'll get these, uh, these old uh, bobber stoppers, they come on these ties. You got like five or six on these wires where you see that hole right there. You just stick this through, you just stick your line through that hole like that just kind of fold it over and hold this line like that now you're just going to push this bobber stopper down on the line and just pull it until the line pops loose now your bobber stoppers on there and it's very easy to adjust it it's kind of snug but now you can keep your cork in position or if you want to cast and you want it down low it'll, it'll go back and forth but yeah if you have a large one on the bottom you can use a small one on the top i just have a bunch of large ones so i just put it on there it's it's fine and then when i put my jig hook on there guys uh i gotta cut that there's a little rough spot in that line but what i do when i uh i always use a, a palomer not when i'm beetle spin fishing because that double loop on the uh, beetle spin let me show you right here you see that double loop right there the the trilenes and all that a slip on them it don't matter what you do I've, t I've wrapped them 10 times and they still will slip but if you use a palomar on the beetle spin it works great but on these jig hooks what i prefer to do is uh i just use a a berkeley trilene knot you know it's called the trilene knot and, and uh i can't hardly see because this mosquito net i got on my head <laughs> these buffalo nets are horrific guys but anyway i'll put that through there like that and you just twist it six times one two three four five six and then you want to make sure you got enough line so you can get a loop going you see that loop on top and we'll go back through the eye of the hook right here and then i'm going to grab the side of that loop whoops i pulled it back out anyway you go through there grab that tag in pull it a little bit so you got a little bit there to work with now i got the side of that loop and i also got that side of the uh, tag in and i'm gonna keep pulling that until i get me another loop going just fold it over now i got two loops and then all you do is you just push this right in the middle of the loop and kind of pull it a little bit once you get it started a little bit you can wet it with your mouth but i can't do that because i got this mosquito net on so i'll just dip it in the water it keeps it from getting hot and and you just want to snug this up just snug this thing up so it's not too tight get it just about like that you don't want to get real tight on it because then you'll make the line weak stretch it and stuff then cut your tag end off and now what we got is a, a jig hook a good little kobe area oh yeah see he's working over there on the bank but uh, it's a good little Kobe area and they like to spawn right there. So you'll get some new, you know, ones that are pre-spawners, they'll be ready to work the area. Sometimes they'll be aggressive and sometimes they won't. We're gonna give these old pre-spawners a try though. I'm hoping there's some pre-spawners up there. Yep, yeah, he's there. If I can get him out of there. Oh, he's a good one too. Oh yeah. I, I oh yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I don't know what it is about that spot. Man, that's a pretty one. There is something about that spot, guys, because that's usually where the big guys are always at. Man, that's a pretty one. Nice big chunky one. Yes, sir. 
We'll take him. There we go. There he is. Another good one. Oh yeah. Another good one. Oh yeah, he's pretty. Put that orange on that guy. He ain't as big as that last one, but that's a good one. Yes, sir. That's what we like right there. We'll take him. Well, guys, the rod and reel I like to use is a Max X10 by Alba Garcia. It's a light spinning reel, and I got it spooled with a six pound test, high vis Mr. Crappie fishing line. And uh, I got it on a Shakespeare Micro Series. This is a light action rod, and it's a five foot six. And you can get these rods at Walmart, or you can get them under my video in the description box. I got a link with the reel and the rod down underneath. The reels are kind of hard to find at Walmart, but you can find them around like Academy Sports and stuff. But anyway, guys, just letting you know what rod and reel I like to use. Oh, there he, there he is. Uh-oh, uh-oh. We've got a little fighter going on here. Is he big enough? Uh, he, he's not bad. He's a, he's a chunk. Easy there. That's a pretty bluegill. We're going to go out to the bigger ones. But he's, I mean, he make a good pan fryer. <laughs> Hole fryer, anyhow. But yeah. Later. Man, this is a big old worm. Uh, I just thread that worm on there, like zigzag it through there, here and there, and try to keep that hook point covered up. If you keep that hook point covered up, your your success of uh, catching that bluegill is a whole lot higher. He's more out to not fidget with it; he'll just take it. But that that red guys, what that does is draw attention to that night crawler. It's sitting there, they, they love night crawlers. They can smell them and stuff, but if you help him out, say, hey, looky here, and he comes and looks at that red, and he says, oh, there's my food. Whoosh, and grabs it real quick. That's what we want. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Oh yeah, he's there. Wow, that's a pretty good one. Pretty good one. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we're talking about that's a pretty good one guys look at that guy he's mad about it too <laughs> that's a pretty blue gill right there Ugh. yes sir we'll take it there's a real good spot right in, back in there that they they like to build a nest every time. You usually catch a, there he is. I was gonna say you usually catch a pretty good one in that spot. Might need to tighten my drag just a little bit. There he is. He's just a really good, oh, he's a, he's a good one. <laughs> I was gonna say he's a really good fighter, but he's actually a pretty good, pretty good bluegill. Yes, sir. Man, he's pretty. Love the colors. We'll take it. As far as the uh, the splash, guys, sometimes, sometimes the brim are a little spooky, and you might want to use a little lighter cork and take a, you know, kind of flip it in there like that. But most of the time what i've found about about the bluegills around in my area anyhow is they like to splash what it does is draw attention bloom and then he sees it and says oh let me go see what that was because when they're feeding they're hungry they're looking for anything to hit the water and i've i've actually when the brim wouldn't bite nothing at all making big splashes and stuff made them bite sometimes and uh, that's sometimes that's what it takes. Big splashes. Let's see if there's one up in there. Oh, 
Oh yeah, he's there. He's there. I got my trolling motor going crazy. There we go. Alright. We got him. Oh, he's a good one. <laughs> yeah. He's not a giant, but he's a pretty good one. Pretty colors, man. Look at that. That's a pretty one. Hey, we'll take him. The wind, guys, is super tough on this side, but the fish are there. The fish seem to be, look at that. The fish are in this area over here. I can just, hey, he's, he, he's gonna be a good one, pretty sure. Oh yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Beautiful orange belly on that thing, look at that. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty bluegill. Yes, sir, we're gonna take him. Oh yeah, he ought to be in there. That's a gift, there he is. Hey, he's a good fighter. Come on in here, Mr. Bluegill. Look at that guy. Powerful. <laughs> oh, that's why. He's a good one. Yeah, he's a good one. Man, I'm liking it. Yeah, we, I hadn't... Uh, let me get this boat. I hadn't uh, did a link check on any of these guys, so I guess I need to... Because I've caught quite a few about his size. Let's see what we're catching here. A little over eight and a half. So about like what we're, we, we've we been catching on the big ones. Eight and a half, that's a good bluegill. We'll take him. And another tip, guys, when you got wind like I got today, your lure, when it's sitting there and your cork is bouncing up and down like that, that bait is bouncing up and down. And they know a worm is not going to bounce up and down like that. Them fish are smarter than that. They know that the bait is just going to flow through the water. You know, you put a worm out there, he might wiggle, but he's just going to float through the water. He's not going to float and do this up and down and all that. They know that, that something's up with that. So if you're going to uh, get a pretty good windy day, try to find you the calmest spot, spot you can. Now on an aggressive day when they're really just tearing it up, it don't matter. But when it's like today, you want to find a calm spot like back in there. And then you got a better chance of getting on the bite. Yeah, right there. That might be a good, good spot for the pre-spawners. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he's there. I almost didn't get him because my trolling motor. <laughs> I got to pull out in the open. Oh yeah, he's a good one. I like to miss him. Man, he is beautiful. Love that orange belly. Man. Some pretty ones, guys. I am enjoying catching. Having some fun. We'll take it. Well, guys, I'll tell you how bad the wind is today. You know how when you're pulling in a big old brim on a on a cane pole or a crappie stick or whatever, and you're trying to pull him in and he's going, vroom, vroom, vroom. that's what the wind is doing to me today. <laughs> that's how bad it is. It, I'll, I'll be going one direction and it'll blow me the other way. I have to turn around and go back the other way. Just keep, I'm just fighting it, trying to stay in position. And I'm trying to stay in position because I'm getting bites. When they're biting like that, you got to try to stay on them if you can. <laughs> but it is fun. You, it's just you just can't hardly beat bluegilling. These these fish fight so hard, and we're just getting into some good good ones, guys. We're fixing to get into some slabs, big old thick ones. And when we get into them, guys, it's on. <laughs> oh man, but I love it. There he is. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, what is that? That is, I, I don't think that's a brim. If he is, he is a good one. What is that? Oh, whoa, what is that? You got me curious. Oh, get out of my... 
Oh, I think that's a catfish. Oh yeah. Hey, we take him. That's a good eating size channel cat right there. And there ain't nothing wrong with catching him when you're bluegilling. <laughs> good fighter too. Easy there, guy. Oh. Oh yeah. Hey, that's a pretty one. These old fish, man, they are healthy looking. Well, these guys are. I've caught some bass that look kind of skinny, but but so far the bluegill and stuff look pretty good. Yeah, there he is. He'll go nice right alongside them bluegill. We'll take you. Well, guys, here's another thing that these things are good for. You see that them rubber bobber stoppers? And I'm snagged on a limb. Watch this. You can just reel all the way down to your jig, give it a little poke, and undone. Then, just flip it out there and reset. There we go. That seems like a good spot. Hey, yeah, it's a good spot. <laughs> oh, he's got some power. Come on in here. Oh yeah. Yep, that's another pretty one. Yes, sir. Man, we're catching some good ones today. I'm loving it. Having lots of fun. We'll take you. Oh yeah, there we go. There he is. Get him in here. He's a, he's a pretty good one, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Pretty bluegill. We'll take him. Well, guys, don't forget about the 10-second rule. It's all about patience. You just, you, yeah, especially if you're new at this, you want to count to 10 Mississippi before you move to a different location. Unless they're biting good, then you want to jump around. But if they're not biting good, you want to cast her out there and let it sit. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. And if you get all the way to 10 Mississippi, you can go ahead and move it or not. You don't have to, but it's a way to learn to be a little bit patient because some people drop, pull, drop, pull, drop, pull, and it slows you down and, and gives you a chance at, at that big fish. You might miss other words. Sometimes you'll miss them, you know, just a way to be a little more patient. Sometimes that four or five second wait, don't get them and you, you go seven eight seconds and then he decides oh yeah i'm gonna take that and then you might catch you a big nice fat brim and it was worth every every second but that's just another little tip to try that 10 second wait where was he i don't know but that's probably a good spot right there yep that's a good spot Pretty good, strong fighter, man. Strong. <laughs> yeah, he's a good one. Ah, nice and thick. Good hole fryer right there. We'll take it. Well, guys, I'm trying to catch that last fish. I done broke my cork. There he is. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I broke my cork and I'm about out of worms, so. Hey, this might be a good one. Oh, yeah. That's what we want. Hey, that's a great fish to end the day with right there. That's a pretty bluegill. Nice. They're, they're really getting fat, but their, their backs are still not as thick as I like them, but they are getting nice and chunky. I love it, guys. Hey, I appreciate you guys watching. Later. Well, guys, I broke my cork, so... I'm going to cast out here a little bit. There he goes. Hey, he's a pretty good one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Another good one. Old broken cork seems to be working. I'm going to keep using it. 
I found a few more worms in my box, so I said, I'll try. go ahead and finish them up. We'll take him. Oh yeah, he's there. He is back there. He's almost, he's kind of, he's just a good strong fighter, I guess. Oh, that's one of them bluish. He's kind of more of a gray, but look at that purple, man. He is purple. That is pretty. Man, that is a pretty blue deal. Some yellow stripes on him on that side. All right, guys. Man, pretty one. Later.